Hey guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Virgo, this is a date and time specific reading. I'm focusing on Saturn having moved into Pisces. You've all kind of been asking me for transit readings, and this is a big one. Our personal planets, Venus, Mars, Mercury, they move a lot. But the bigger planets, Saturn, Pluto, Uranus, Neptune, Jupiter, they don't move as fast. So when they do change signs, it's very impactful. So that's what I'm going to do for this series of readings. And it just so happens that Saturn moved into Pisces just an hour or two after the full moon on March 7th. And then later in the month, I'm going to do another series of date and time specific readings because Pluto is changing signs on the 23rd of March. So stay tuned for that. But what we're looking at is how might this impact your relationship? So I'm going to give you some key words and thoughts to understand the archetype of Saturn in Pisces. Not really a comfortable mix. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to say that. <laughs> um, the Pisces portion of this reading is focusing on Things that complete, it's the last sign of the zodiac before we move into a new astrological e year in airy season. It's about transitioning. It's about releasing, letting go of things that hold you back or hold you down or you have no use for anymore. It's about dissolving things that aren't, um, maybe you don't have your mind on it and one day you turn around and you go like, you know, I haven't even thought about that thing in forever. It's just dissolved. So that's Pisces energy. Pisces is also about, um, you know, universal forgiveness. We're all one. It's boundaryless. There's nothing between you and me. We are energetically all the same. Saturn, not so much. Saturn is all about boundaries. Um, Saturn is coming into the watery element of Pisces and building dams and saying no. Uh, there's rules to this game. There are limits. There are restrictions. There is structure. Um, I've got my watch going. Saturn is the great teacher with the time clock, the timekeeper. Um, so Saturn wants us to learn lessons, and therefore there is karmic lessons. There's reckonings. Uh, Saturn wants us to understand that there are boundaries, that we can't live in this amorphous Pisces land. Um, so the words spiritual discipline go together well for Pisces and um, Saturn. We may have issues around forgiveness. There may be lessons around forgiveness for the next two and a half to three years, which is about how long it takes Saturn to move from one sign to another. Last time Saturn was in Pisces was approximately 30 years ago. Right. Um, so let's jump in. Um, one last note for those of you who might be interested, the morning musings, which I do every morning, a little reading for the signs. I'm going to do a full spread later on in the day. Those are now available for individual purpose. Purpose. Why do I keep saying that? Purchase. There's a link in the descri description box below if you're curious about it and don't want to commit to the monthly membership. Um, you can try one out and see what you think. Okay, here we go, Virgo. I like it. All right. So the overall energy for this reading, something you may be moving through in your next highest timeline is Six of Pentacles. It's about energy of generosity, reciprocity, equal give and take. Something where you, it's not just about what you give, it's about somebody being as invested in the connection as you are. Wow. Wow. What a way to kick it off. Okay, so we're releasing some things in this first row. This second row is Saturn's lessons and rewards. He's not all bad. Saturn likes to reward us for a job well done and for our, our growth um, in any situation. When we finally go like, oh, now I get it. <laughs> Saturn's like, yay. So I feel like what I'm seeing here, and then we've got your next highest timeline in the bottom row, Ooh, I love the divine feminine here because we have the divine masculine. Um, right here, right here. What I, when I refer to our next highest timeline, we hope that it occurs when we move from one astrological year to the next astrological year. That is very earthbound, though. Um, so what I refer to it as um, is when we learn those lessons, when we have the growth, 
I looked at Saturn in Pisces from 30 years ago. I know what I was going through at that time. I know the lessons that I was, you know, the tasks I had to um, face, the situations, the boundary issues, the choices that I made, be they good or bad. And I look now and I say, oh, I don't have to learn those lessons again. Well, that means that I'm now in a higher timeline than I was back then. So for the purposes of this conversation, your next highest timeline is one where in your connection, you don't have to go back or even in your life in general, let me say it that way. You don't have to go back and relearn old lessons. You've grokked it. You've gotten a hold of it. You've mastered it. You're moving onward and upward. So it's, it's about ascension. So if you understand the term ascension, that's what I'm really referring to. So Pisces is calling you to let go of a few things. Um, release, let go, transition. You're being called to transition to something more healing. I feel there's been a lack of confidence here. Now this could be you. This could be your person. Remember, I'm reading for you and your connection. So especially if you're here as a cross watcher for a Virgo, keep that in mind. Uh, but, you know, I feel like there's divine masculine energy who hasn't taken charge. There's been, and that, again, could be um, you or your person. I'm feeling like I'm looking at the need to sort of release that expectation that your person knows what to do and will take the reins and have the confidence and the courage to overcome obstacles and do whatever it takes to get to you or to up level the connection or fill in the blank. Pisces energy is telling you, no, you need to heal that. You need to get closure around it and about it and let it go. You cannot take that forward with you into the next astrological year or into your next timeline release the expectation of that, heal it, um, find your own inner strength and your own confidence. And that's in the next row because it's smack in the middle of the reading is your energy Virgo. This is a card of Virgo. So all the energy goes to the vortex, to the center. And Saturn's saying, you've got to be okay on your own. You have to be okay on your own. And who is she flanked by? Knight of Cups, King of Cups. Okay, this is talking about emotional availability versus just romance for romance's sake. And I think part of the lesson will be about that, about holding out and staying independent and autonomous unless or until you get the true emotional availability. Someone who shows up for you in equal measure gives from their heart to the degree that you give from yours. Like it's, it's something you can actually put words to. Now that's a little difficult for the King of Cups. He's not comfortable expressing feelings, although he feels them deeply. And sometimes the Knight of Cups is just too darn flowery, right? They have all the perfect words, but they don't, it doesn't always anchor in as much. So I do feel like I'm looking at a situation where Saturn says, let go of the dream, the fantasy land of it all. And there is a bit of fantasy land here. Um, and I'm not saying, like, I count myself right in there. Like, I have my vision is what I'm talking about. Your vision of how it should be versus how it really is and what you really desire. Do you really desire someone who shows up for you emotionally, whether they have the flowery words or not, but proves through their behaviors how they care and how they're invested so that's what i'm really trying to say and then when we go forward in your next highest timeline absolutely closing out one cycle so a new cycle can begin the healing has taken place we've done the release and then we get more rewards we up level our connection wish fulfillment contentment on an emotional level it looks good virgo so this Saturn energy seems to me like it's a mix. It's a mix of lesson and reward. So I don't want you to take it 
but you know being we have this divine feminine on the bottom i'm absolutely with with her with the emperor with the four of wands i am feeling twin flame energy but i feel what you need to release and heal is the idealized version of it that's the word i'm looking for the idealized version of what that is versus the reality and to maintain your independence and autonomy and be okay being single and unattached uh, in this 3D world, pentacles, right? Um, until the reality of what this connection can be, or the next, for some of you, it may be somebody totally new, um, until the reality of it shows up in the way that you deserve, which is invested, connected, generous with time, energy, effort, resources, spirit. Yeah, it's good. Mm hmm because that means smooth sailing the two sixes here the overall energy really nice who emperor and strength mm -hmm. oh my gosh um yeah so i feel like you've both been on very individual journeys I know that from the hermit here and remember this is the pisces portion so that's what we're looking at is what needs to be transitioned or released or let go of or dissolved there is something here about you know commitment in a conventional relationship kind of a sense you know who are you with are you with me are you with like are you playing the field what What's the dealio? And, and I kind of feel like you've both been on your own individual journeys this way. There's been some kind of potential issue that needed to be overcome. That's been the cross to bear. Um, underneath the Queen of Cups, that's the empath, the sensitive, the, um, the intuitive, open-hearted energy, but kind of tamped down. For those of you who are new, when I pull from the bottom of the deck, which I do frequently, I'm really tapping into unconscious awareness and it's almost like you've been a bleeding heart for this person um even while you've both been journeying in a very solitary way kind of waiting to overcome the challenges and for them to for them to overcome it for them to have the courage them the emperor to have the courage and the confidence to overcome the restrictions or whatever um perceived blocks to this connection i'm saying it that way because i it's a general reading it's not a personal reading for some of you there could be a third party for others of you right marriage could be involved um marriages plural for some but there seems to be something that's been um that that you've been waiting for your person to overcome so you could have this beautiful connected reciprocal relationship and sail off into the sunset and pisces is saying no heal that and release it or release it and heal it mm -hmm. see it clearly you're being gifted insight here the hand of spirit that ace of swords is the way you're going to look at this situation see things clearly not with blinders on or with what was i saying before i didn't say fantasy land i said your idealized version so no we're seeing the sharp edges of reality of things that haven't come to pass and we this was in the morning musing and we choose a new path and have our new beginning wow yeah the two of wands was with the ace of swords i just wanted to double check in the morning musing these cards were exactly in this order so um this that's a good morning musing to get i'm looking at this saying there's a whole new world waiting for you in your next highest timeline but not unless or until you release what didn't come to pass because someone didn't take the action 
didn't have the confidence or the courage to overcome an obstacle. I don't think it's you. I think it's them. Um, that's not an indictment against them as a person. What I'm saying is you're here for a reason. You're here watching to see what the heck happened, what might unfold, what is my part in this? Well, release any kind of attachment to the other person picking up the reins, right? Getting on the horse and, and overcoming all the obstacles like we see in all the fairy tales. It do, it's not realistic. Um, and focus on getting clear about that. So that you can say, yeah, that's not the path I want going forward. I want something more stable, more up-leveled, more committed. Offers in real time, not in 5D, not in the zone where, you know, everything, time is too compressed. And it's unusual because I usually, Virgo, am very much about understanding that we're all connected at 5D. <coughs> and we are. But this reading is about Saturn, and Saturn is saying, no, your feet are planted here on Earth. So it's time to get your head out of the Piscean clouds, right? The 5D clouds for now. That's part of what the lessons will be with Saturn and Pisces. It will not be comfortable for a lot of us spiritual types. Um and that's why our lessons are about, well, do you want the romance or do you want someone who may not have the flowery words but feels deeply and intensely and can give as well as they receive? Someone said in a comment uh, for the Leo reading, you know, thanks for not sugarcoating things. Like, thanks for giving it to us straight and... I appreciate that you don't over romanticize and I apologize because sometimes the over romanticization if that's a word is really what we're looking for it's like a lifeline but with Saturn and Pisces I don't want to sugarcoat it I want you to see where um where things could go off the rails if we're not based in reality so let's look at Saturn We've got the Knight of Cups with, <laughs> oh yes, with the Nine of Pentacles, love it. Queen of Swords, Queen of Wands, Death card. So here you are, and Saturn's all about this. Be practical, Queen of Swords, Truth Seeker, Truth Teller. Be in your power, right? Queen of Wands, takes no prisoners and grow from this and change from this and transform and evolve. That's what the whole thing right here. I almost don't even have to read about the king. I will because I feel like that may be the reward. So let's see our king of cups. That was easy. <laughs> yes. And Saturn will reward you with your happily ever after, Virgo, with your shot. As it should be. Okay. Your next highest timeline, brand new beginning, closing out the ugly cycles or the difficult cycles or the challenging cycles and beginning new, and we've got the Four of Wands here, which is beginning life partnership. It can be about twin flame energy. Wow. So this King of Cups, by the way, um, is showing up here in your next highest timeline too. And I feel as if on some level, whoever it is, that you're finally going to release attachment to waiting right or to anticipating or to expecting them to take some sort of action to you know to get the cojones in other words 
and they haven't. And, and like you're here in Pisces land with that Ace of Swords saying, yep, I see it clearly. I'm choosing a new path. I want a new beginning. You go through your Saturnian energy here. You absolutely are clear minded, practical about it in your power. You grow from this and you say, yeah, I don't need the flowery romance as much as I need someone who has emotional integrity and availability and who shows up and then they show up and knight of swords coming in to clear the air king of cups i feel this is all the same person and that's your next highest timeline is it it just arrives because you've released attachment to it because you've stopped expecting it and the minute you do that, it's sort of the weirdest energetic phenomenon. When you finally release, when you finally say, okay, I release, I'm done. I'm, I know what I desire. I know what I deserve. I'm moving forward. I'm releasing this energy over here. And then you turn around and like the movie, everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> Okay, it's there right in front of you. So don't be surprised if in your next highest timeline, what you waited for that didn't materialize and therefore you released appears. Might it appear as the same person from the past? Sure. Might it appear as someone totally new? Yep. And they won't waste a minute making their case clear. They won't waste a minute being sure you understand them, how they feel, what they want. This is King of Pentacles, life partnership, King of Cups, deep emotional integrity and availability. Who Nine of Cups. What did I say? I said it could be the one from the past could be somebody brand new though who knows how to drive <laughs> the bus so to speak and that will be the wish fulfillment and then your heart will be like oh thank you saturn i am so glad i learned that lesson i'm so glad i didn't get lost in pisces land that you kept me on this straight <laughs> narrow path so beautiful virgo okay so that's where I'm going to stop for now. Just so you know, there is a link in the description box below that right in the first sentence that will take you to the extended. And now we're going to look at whoever this person is. This could be the same person, could be diff somebody different, but we're looking at where they're headed with Saturn and Pisces. Um, instead of their next highest timeline, we're going to look at their intentions toward you and the connection. Um, going forward. So that's what I've got for you when I close out with some Oracle. So if this has spoken to you, that will take it even deeper. Here's the astrology that came through. The emperor is here twice. That's Aries associated with Mars, just like this is um, Taurus and Libra associated with Venus. So we do have divine masculine and feminine in this reading. Uh, Virgo here in the Hermit, love when you show up and, and right there in the Nine of Pentacles right in your own reading we have Taurus here in the Hierophant Queen of Cups is Cancerian energy Leo in the Strength card we've got um, Pisces in the Knight of Cups but of course Queen of Swords is Libra Queen of Wands is Aries this is Scorpio in the Death card and the King of Cups which is out twice is also Scorpio so if you're dealing with a Scorpio or someone who has a lot of Scorpio in their chart or you meet a Scorpio, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> That's a, just a little extra added confirmation. The world card is Aquarius and Capricorn. This is Saturn. And this is also uh, Taurus, just like the Hierophant. And this is Gemini. Uh, Knight of Swords is Gemini. And I already said the King of Cups and the Emperor. So that's what I have for you, Virgo. Powerful reading. The link to the extended is below. I'll see you there in a second. Bye for now.